So today we've got a 2016 BMW. The brakes look like this, and we're going to turn them into this, what they should look like. Stay tuned, and uh, we'll get after it. Hey, YouTube. Uncle Lemmy here. It's finally time to get to these brakes. Normally people start by taking this wheel off, and some might go, hey, those ain't too bad. Well, if you feel on the back side, you can feel the grooves. Uh, so obviously that ain't no good. And a lot of will beep to you too. Uh, a lot of times people will just hit the reset button and uh, you know, just reset it. So the brakes aren't redone. They just reset it when they go to sell it. So, oh yeah, they don't need nothing. Oh, we got leaves on there. So step one is not to take off the wheel. Step one is to remove this. Because when you go to push in your pistons, it's gonna push up fluid. A lot of times the dealer will just dump in some juice in your brake fluid, you know? And, uh, so then you, you push this in and you get brake fluid all down in there. And if you don't know anything about brake fluid, that's terrible stuff on paint, plastic, whatever. So I'm gonna pop this off here and then we will be back. But it's pretty simple. Just got some of these little plastic dealios. We'll be back. It looks like it's a, a tan, a tan. All right, so leave that. Or a tan is close enough. And they're not a screw, okay? You just turn them just a quarter turn or so. Pop this out. Look at that, look at that. We can clean this out now. Sweet. And then it looks like my fluid is low. No, it's all right. Oh, howdy, neighbor. So, it looks like it's quite full. So we're gonna definitely open this up and then we'll uh, leave the cap on so nothing falls in it. But we'll put some rags around here to catch any fluid if it does come out. You probably don't need plywood under it, whatever. You got your own way of doing it, that's cool. So this is what I'm doing. If you work in the gravel, it's no fun. You drop something, good luck finding it. So we're gonna get a steel plate under there, get a jack up, get the wheel off, and then uh, we'll get after it. But the new brakes came. We got our Rock Auto parts, no sponsor or affiliation. It's just who sent me the stuff. Just a little tip, you gotta use a jack. You don't have some foam on here. Get you a pool noodle or something, don't you know? That'll be better than beating up your sweet ride. Seeing how this is a beamer, figured we'd get out the old metrics. What do we got? Yeah, 18 is a little sloppy. Yeah, there we go, 17. So I'm gonna put a couple of ooga doogas and break them free, lift it up, and zip it off with the air. I'm doing Partly I'm doing this video because there's a lot of things that people leave out when they do a video on this kind of stuff. As you can see right here, the brake pad was sitting right there. It didn't really move around a lot. It's supposed to be able to squeeze and let off, squeeze and let off. See that hump? But anyway, you need to do some, some maintenance a little more sometimes especially in the rusty area so I'm gonna get a shot of this real quick before and after and then your pins this is so crucial folks take you some some scotch bright or whatever you call the crap okay just clean them up you will thank yourself later because the brakes won't drag and wear right out and go, man, why do I already got to put new ones on it? So I'll clean this up and I'll be back. 
I hit it with a little sanding wheel. I ain't gonna get it totally perfect, but look at how much better that is. Now, another thing to keep an eye out for. See all that? But it is critical to clean in there because that's, that's where your brakes are supposed to slide, don't you know? Now, one would think, yep, yep, that's good. But look really close. See that little bit of, that's all it takes, that little bit. Take your time and do it right. Get it all out of there. And then this little file. Look at that. And then see that edge? A little more crud. We'll do a little bit more work on this because, you know, why not do it right the first time? Usually you don't have to go through all this work to do all this. I'm not so worried about the rust down in there. Your slide pins, wherever your brake pads are gonna slide and ride, you know, it, it's gonna be a little bit rusty. I mean, it's a 16, this is 22 right now. So, you know, these could be the original pads. But if I wouldn't have cleaned these up, brakes would have drugged and you'd have to replace them again right away and that's no fun and then how long and if I mean do you even think that my fancy paint the ceramic paint that I'm gonna put on here would have even stuck if it would have it wouldn't have lasted very long there was even some you can still see where it's kind of the rust is kind of coming up I could clean it a little better but I spent enough time on this. I mean, you really, like I said, just gotta focus on the areas where the pads you know, are gonna be sliding. So we'll get some paint on these now, some grease. Anybody else out there like me, and you got these kind of odds, it's not a big deal, but it's 50-50, you know? Front or rear? Mm, let's try that. No, that's the rear. So this, what we wanna do here is we wanna clean these babies up before we put them on. Don't make the mistake of putting them on with the machining oil that they use to protect them. So, you know, I learned as a machinist to put oil on the parts. Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe my 50 50 wasn't. Wasn't off. Look at that. But you can see there's oil on these. And all you're going to do is pack oil into your new ceramic fancy pads. So just give them a quick. That's all it takes. They sent me the, the wrong, wrong rotors at least. Ay, ay, ay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that and do the right thing. Just clean this baby up the best I can and just put it back on. Parts won't be here for a couple days, so sweet. Back at it. Still got all our parts from before. The only thing that came from the kit that hasn't worked so far, the front rotors. And uh, I'll leave more details on why um, the problem that I ran into, because maybe you'll run into a problem like that. So if you watch this video before you do the job, like I usually do, then you might know you need a different size. But no one ever told anybody, me especially, about, you know, you buy brakes for something, and there's a bunch of different sizes. Huh, who would have thought? Well, it's just my luck, don't you know? 
They look the same, right? Yeah, they have the same holes. But look at the height. Right. They're, they're definitely not the same. Look at how wide this is. Compared to that. So, and the other difference. Somewhere around there. Oh! Dang. Look at that. Nowhere in there. That's why I knew it wouldn't go on. Because of this hole. So, fortunately, they're different holes. So, I thought there was a 3 series brake. And then what I got. Well, there has, obviously, there's got to be something else. Sorry if there's some wind here. So we got our BMW getting ready to put the brakes on. I ran into a snag. If any of you are going to do this, you might run into the same snag. This is the GT model. And the ones they sent me from Amazon, they're like a 2 niner niner, right? These newer ones that are the right ones, they ended up being a, I think they're called the 312. Right, so 312 and 300, that's obviously different, and I'm not going to measure it because you can just see, even the height is different, and then also this inner diameter is also different. So when we go to install it, just like we did before we figured out those are the wrong ones, but we're going to clean off the machining oil on these. These were just some cheapos off of Rock Auto, and I got to looking at it, and you get what you pay for. Oh, there it is. You get what you pay for. It's a rough casting. I mean, now I just have slotted <coughs> brakes. It'll be fine. Now again, just like as the last video, in case you in case you missed it on the earlier part, make sure you pump your brakes before you take off to tight, take up that, that gap or you will uh, dirty your drawers on the way out the doors. So uh, make sure you pump up your brakes, don't you know? Okay, we're gonna let some of that air dry off a little bit. We should probably paint them while it's not together, but I don't, I don't care. Anything's gonna look better than that, right? So we're going to do search our inner Bob Ross and paint some happy little calipers and then we'll be back. We got our first coat of Duplicolor paint on there. Our bracket ran it on the old cheek poker in there and cleaned it up pretty good. A little bit of scotch bright. so now I'm going to run some of this self-etching primer and then some of this black. We'll be back. All right, we got them painted. I don't know what the directions say because I didn't read them. I just cleaned them up, took the paint, shook it up. And after I obviously cleaned them real well, but I did one light coat first and let that dry pretty good. And then the second one I put on pretty, pretty heavy. So I think my inner Bob Ross really worked out pretty good today looks nice and the little metal clip I have it painted black I'm gonna do some little touch-up work and I'm gonna clip that back in and this side is done got our our clip back on here all painted up looks pretty nice so cleaned up the rims a bit got all the tar chunks that were stuck on the inside and anyway figured my was in there might as well but that's it for this side now we're on to the other side. This will give you a little better idea. They're doing patchwork on my road. And some of this stuff that's stuck in there, that could throw off your balance a little bit, don't you know? So why don't you just clean it out and uh, 
help yourself at high speeds. I don't have a problem, but I don't want one. So we got her lifted up and we'll get after this side now. Same thing. Now before we push this caliper in, I'm gonna come over here. But we need to crack this. See, we're, we're pretty full. So I wanna put a couple rags up here and don't wanna cause too much pressure pushing it back and make a mess. So I'm gonna use this little pump to extract it into there instead of make a mess in there and yeah. So if you can, pump out some of it with this and just add in some new if you need to, no big deal. So I used the pump, got a bunch of it out, pushed the piston in and you can see that it's right up, right up to the very edge. So good thing we pumped some out or it would have overflowed. So I'm going to pump out some more. It's in all the way but I still got to do the rear. So when I push in the rear, it's gonna come up even more. So fluid looks nice and clean still. The lighting is hard to see. So we're gonna leave the brake break fluid for now. A couple years, maybe we'll have to change it. After you get your caliper off, this will slide right out. If it doesn't, then these pins are either shot or really dirty like these ones are. But it's simple to clean these up. See all that old grease or rubber, whatever it's stuck on there, it's going to keep it from sliding. And then where your pads rub, on either side, just like any vehicle, you're going to want to clean those and make sure you get a little bit of grease on them. So we'll just take a little bit of scotch right here. Bling bling that baby up, regrease it, put her all back together. This bracket. You can see there's metal. You really gotta clean that up. You can see that line. That's kind of like where the pads was dragging, I imagine. This other side I've worked on too, but you can see how it's delaminating a little bit. Like up here, it's kind of thicker. So anyway, you gotta try to scrape that off or else when you put your pads in there, it'll be too tight and it won't wanna slide. So we're gonna have to clean this up a little better. These are not OEM, they're just from Rock Auto, but I'm gonna have to take off a little bit on each side of these with the file because it's just like the driver's side was. I actually got this side together. It did it did pop together, but it did not really want to slide. So we're going to remove a little bit of material with the file. Oh yeah, right there, you can see. But that's where she was a little tight. So we're going to take off a little material and put her back in. And to the rear. They don't really look like they need to be changed, but I haven't had the car for about a year and I might as well just change them because I have the parts. I hope, at least the right rotors, but we shall find out. Make sure you only lift from right there. Those are specifically for lifting the vehicle. You can see the one in the front. So don't live anywhere except for those places. Plastic. Brilliant. But they know what they're doing. Now, let's put our thinking cap on. Measure those with our eyechrometer, because you know that's the best way. You know. And then, uh, before we get it all tore apart, make sure it's Kind of close looking, right? It could be, obviously, it's not OEM. 
but there is a difference. It's right there, that step. This one doesn't have the step, obviously. So I got to looking, and these really aren't bad. Even on the other side, you can feel it. But I'm gonna still lube everything up, take everything off. That way I can get it off when it's necessary for the time comes, you know. We're also going to clean up the caliper, lube everything, and, uh, you know, put a little bit of paint on it, because why not? So we were able to get the calipers off, no problem, just the two bolts. And then you'll be able to disassemble the brakes off of that. It really is simple to do. That's why I didn't bother videoing it. But the point of the video, like I said, my pads are good. But I would have to clean them up. You can see where they're rusty. That's where you'd want your grease. Really nowhere else. I mean, you can put a little bit where it slips in there around that ring where the piston goes. But uh, maybe on the outer edges, you can see it doesn't even rub, right? So why put any lube? It's just going to fly off and warm up. And these pads, even though the rotors are wrong, these pads do seem to be correct there's a tab up tab up on the other side it's just a single single so we got the rotor off you can see here it's kind of difficult but all those little dots right and then this edge has starting to build a little lip where it's wearing down so what I did we're not getting new, because those are good. But you know what we used. Look at this. Bling, bling. They even ran it nice and easy. Around this. Took that lip off. But look at that. Just a little more work. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Probably won't want to use the wheel on that, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get it with something. We'll make them all look. Tss, 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 tape this off. And, Make it all pretty. So real quick again on this caliper bracket. The pads are supposed to slide in there, right? See where it's been sitting? See where it's been sitting? So that's where they've been hanging out. See how rusty? Even though there was plenty of pad, whoever did it, I'm not saying it was a dealer or whoever owned it before, but they didn't use any brake grease. So this is obviously the importance of brake grease. So we're gonna use our little file. And very gently. So now you can see, I got it down to bare metal. Yeah, I got a little aggressive on that edge in there. You don't, as long as it ain't sticking out, you're fine. So that's kind of the idea. Take off any little burrs, any little sharp edges. And down in here, where I spent a lot of my, a better file would be better. Would be better than this, but you know, working with what we got here. So we'll clean these out in here, grease them up, put them all back together after we paint them. Your miles in there, might as well. But that's it. For